I woke up in the middle of the night, drenched in sweat. The room was eerily quiet, and the only sound was my own labored breathing. As I tried to calm myself down, I realized that something was not right. I felt a cold draft on my skin, and the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Suddenly, I heard a faint whisper, and my heart skipped a beat. I could not make out what was being said, but the voice seemed to be coming from the corner of my room. As I gathered the courage to investigate, I realized that I was not alone. A dark figure stood in the corner, its eyes glowing red in the darkness. I could feel its malevolent presence, and I knew that it was not there to offer me comfort. The figure slowly approached me, its footsteps echoing ominously on the wooden floorboards. I could feel its icy breath on my face, and I knew that I was in grave danger. I tried to scream, but no sound came out of my mouth. I was paralyzed with fear, and I knew that I was facing an evil beyond my imagination. As the figure loomed over me, I could see its twisted features and its skeletal hands reaching out to me. I knew that I was about to meet my end, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. In a final, desperate attempt to save myself, I closed my eyes and prayed for mercy. But when I opened them again, the figure was gone, and I was left alone in the darkness. Trembling with fear, I realized that I had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. But I also knew that the figure would return, and next time, I might not be so lucky. From that night on, I never slept peacefully again. Every sound, every shadow, filled me with dread, and I knew that I was being watched. I had stumbled upon an evil that I could not comprehend, and I was powerless to stop it. Days turned into weeks, and the fear only grew. I found myself avoiding going to bed at all costs, desperate to keep my eyes open and stay alert. But the sleep deprivation was taking its toll, and my mind was starting to play tricks on me. I would catch glimpses of the figure out of the corner of my eye, or hear its whispered voice in my ear, even when I was wide awake. I started to question my own sanity, wondering if I was losing my grip on reality. One night, as I lay in bed, I felt a presence in the room again. I dared not open my eyes, for fear of what I might see. But I could sense that the figure was there, looming over me once more. I felt its cold breath on my face, and its skeletal fingers wrapping around my neck. I gasped for air, but it was as if an invisible force was squeezing the life out of me. As the darkness closed in around me, I saw a flash of light. Suddenly, the figure was gone, and I could breathe again. I looked around the room, confused and disoriented, but there was no sign of anyone or anything. In the days that followed, I began to investigate the strange occurrences in my home. I discovered that the house had a dark history, and that many people had died there under mysterious circumstances. It was then that I realized that the figure was not just a figment of my imagination, but a malevolent spirit that was haunting the house. I knew that I had to do something to rid myself of the evil presence, or it would consume me completely. With the help of a local priest, I performed a ritual to cleanse the house of the spirit. It was a harrowing experience, and I felt as if the very fabric of reality was being torn apart around me. But when it was over, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. The house was finally free of its dark past, and I could sleep peacefully once again. Or so I thought. As I drifted off to sleep that night, I heard a faint whisper in my ear. It was the voice of the figure, and it spoke just two words. I'm back. I sat bolt upright in bed, my heart pounding in my chest. The room was shrouded in darkness, and I could feel the presence of the malevolent spirit once again. I knew then that the ritual had failed, and the spirit had not been banished from the house after all. In fact, it seemed to have grown stronger and more determined to torment me. For weeks, I lived in a state of constant terror. The spirit would appear to me in my dreams, whispering to me in a language I could not understand. It would move objects around the house, slam doors shut, and flicker the lights on and off. I tried everything to get rid of it. I burned sage, recited prayers, and even tried to reason with the spirit. But nothing seemed to work. Then, one night, I woke up to find the spirit hovering over me, its eyes glowing with a fiery intensity. It seemed to be communicating with me, but again, I could not understand what it was saying. Suddenly, the spirit lunged at me, its hands wrapping around my throat. 
I struggled to free myself, but it was too strong. I felt as if I was being dragged into a bottomless pit of darkness. Just when I thought it was all over, I heard a voice calling out to me. It was the voice of the priest who had helped me with the ritual before. He was reciting a prayer, and I could feel the power of it coursing through me. With a final burst of strength, I pushed the spirit away from me and recited the prayer along with the priest. The spirit screamed in rage, then vanished into thin air. I collapsed onto the bed, gasping for breath. For a few moments, I lay there, trying to catch my breath and make sense of what had just happened. Eventually, I managed to get up and switch on the lights. The room was empty, and there was no sign of the spirit. From that night on, the house was peaceful and quiet. The spirit was gone, and I could finally sleep without fear. But the memory of the horror I had endured stayed with me, haunting me for years to come. As time went on, I thought that I had finally put the horror of that experience behind me. But then, strange things started happening again. At first, it was just little things, like objects moving on their own or a cold breeze blowing through the house. But soon, it escalated to something much worse. I began to see the figure once again, lurking in the shadows and watching me with cold, empty eyes. It seemed to be waiting for something, biding its time until it could strike again. I tried to ignore it, hoping that it would eventually go away. But it was relentless, and the fear it instilled in me was all-consuming. One night, I woke up to find myself unable to move. It was as if something was holding me down, pressing me into the bed with a force that I could not resist. As I struggled to free myself, I saw the figure standing over me, its twisted face twisted into a cruel grin. It spoke to me in a voice that was both mocking and sinister. You thought you could get rid of me, it said. But I will never leave you. You are mine, now and forever. And then, it was gone, leaving me alone in the darkness with my fear. I knew then that there was no escaping the horror that I had brought upon myself. The figure was a part of me now, and there was no way to get rid of it. In the end, I decided to embrace the horror, to let it consume me completely. I became a vessel for the malevolent spirit, spreading its evil throughout the world. And so, I wander the earth now, a haunted and tormented soul, spreading fear and terror wherever I go. The horror of that fateful night will never leave me, and I will forever be cursed by the malevolent spirit that possesses me. As I traveled from place to place, spreading fear and terror, the malevolent spirit that had possessed me continued to grow stronger. Its power was vast and all-consuming, and I was nothing more than a puppet in its twisted game. Everywhere I went, people cowered in fear at the mere sight of me. They knew that I was not human, that I was something far more sinister and terrifying. But no matter how much terror I spread, it was never enough to satisfy the spirit. It craved more, always more, and I was powerless to resist its commands. As the years passed, my body began to decay, my once human form twisting and contorting into something monstrous and unrecognizable. But the spirit that possessed me remained strong, driving me onward in my quest for terror and destruction. And then, one day, I found myself standing in front of the house where it had all begun, where I had first summoned the malevolent spirit that now possessed me. I could feel its presence growing stronger, its grip on me tightening as we drew closer to the house. It was as if it had been waiting for this moment, waiting for me to return to the place where it all began. And then, I was inside the house, surrounded by darkness and the stench of decay. The malevolent spirit was there with me, its presence all-consuming and overwhelming. You have done well, my puppet, it said. But there is still one final task that I require of you. And then, I knew what I had to do. I had to sacrifice someone, to offer up a life in order to feed the insatiable hunger of the malevolent spirit. And so, I set out to find my victim, my mind consumed by a terror and a horror that I could never escape. I wandered through the streets, searching for the perfect victim, someone who would be willing to offer their life to the malevolent spirit that controlled me. And then, I saw her. She was a young woman, innocent and unsuspecting, walking alone down the street. I knew that she was the one, the perfect sacrifice to feed the hunger of the spirit that possessed me. As I approached her, she turned to face me, her eyes widening in terror at the sight of my twisted, monstrous form. 
Please, don't hurt me, she begged, her voice trembling with fear. But I was powerless to resist the commands of the malevolent spirit that controlled me. I seized her by the throat, feeling her pulse pounding beneath my fingers as I squeezed the life out of her. Her body went limp in my grasp, and I felt the rush of power that came with the sacrifice. The malevolent spirit was pleased, its hunger sated for the moment. But even as I basked in the power and terror of the moment, I knew that I was forever cursed. The horror of what I had done, the terror that I had spread, would never leave me. And so, I wander the earth still, a twisted and monstrous form, driven by the malevolent spirit that possesses me. I am a creature of terror and horror, a puppet in a twisted game that I can never escape. My existence is a never-ending nightmare, a horror story that will never come to an end. And in the end, I know that the malevolent spirit will consume me completely, leaving nothing behind but a twisted, monstrous shell. But even as I await my final fate, I cannot escape the knowledge that I brought this horror upon myself. The malevolent spirit was merely a reflection of the darkness within me, a darkness that I could never escape. As I wander the earth, the darkness within me growing stronger with each passing day, I know that there is no escape from the horror that I have brought upon myself. The malevolent spirit that possesses me continues to drive me onward, compelling me to commit unspeakable acts of terror and violence. And with each sacrifice, its power grows stronger, consuming me a little more with each passing moment. I have become a creature of nightmares, feared and reviled by all who lay eyes upon me. And yet, I cannot escape the twisted game that I am trapped within. As I wander the earth, searching for my next victim, I cannot help but wonder what would have happened if I had never summoned the malevolent spirit in the first place. Would I still be a twisted and monstrous form, driven by the darkness within me? Or would I have been able to live a normal life, free from the horrors that I have inflicted upon the world? But there is no point in dwelling on what-ifs. The reality of my situation is all too clear. I am a puppet in a twisted game, a pawn in the game of a malevolent spirit that will never be satisfied. And so, I continue to spread fear and terror wherever I go, my twisted and monstrous form a constant reminder of the horror that I have brought upon myself. But even as I embrace the darkness within me, I cannot help but wonder if there will ever be a way out of this nightmare, a way to escape the horror that I have become. Despite the horror that I have become, there is still a part of me that longs for escape, that yearns to break free from the malevolent spirit that possesses me. As I wander the earth, searching for my next victim, I cannot help but wonder if there is some way to break the curse that has befallen me, some way to free myself from the twisted game that I am trapped within. But the malevolent spirit is always there, a constant presence in my mind, driving me ever forward in my quest for terror and destruction. And then, one day, I came upon a group of people who seemed to possess some knowledge of the supernatural. They recognized me for what I was, a creature of darkness and horror, but instead of running in fear, they approached me, offering to help me break free from the malevolent spirit that controlled me. I was skeptical at first, having grown accustomed to the horror and terror that I had become. But as they explained their plan to me, a glimmer of hope began to form within my twisted and monstrous mind. The plan involved a complex ritual, one that would require the cooperation of several individuals with specific skills and knowledge of the supernatural. But if it worked, it would free me from the malevolent spirit that controlled me, allowing me to live a normal life once more. And so, we set about gathering the necessary components for the ritual, gathering the individuals with the required skills and knowledge. And then, on a dark and stormy night, we began the ritual. As the ritual progressed, I could feel the power of the malevolent spirit within me beginning to weaken, its hold on me slipping away. And then, with a final burst of energy, the spirit was banished, leaving me free at last. I looked down at my twisted and monstrous form, expecting to see it revert back to its human form. But instead, I found that I had been permanently changed by the curse. Though the malevolent spirit was gone, I was forever marked by the horror that I had become. But even as I gazed upon my twisted form, I felt a sense of relief and freedom that I had not felt in years. The horror that had consumed me for so long was finally gone, and I was free to live my life once more. And so, I walked away from the group that had helped me break free from the malevolent spirit, my twisted and monstrous form a constant reminder of the horror that I had brought upon myself. 
But even as I walked away, I felt a sense of hope, a belief that perhaps, someday, I might be able to find some measure of redemption for the horror that I had become. As I walked away from the group that had helped me break free from the malevolent spirit, I began to notice something strange happening to my surroundings. The trees in the sky started to twist and contort, as if they were alive and breathing. Suddenly, I realized that the malevolent spirit had not been banished, but instead had merged with my twisted form, granting me unimaginable powers beyond anything I had ever imagined. As I tested my newfound powers, I realized that I could manipulate reality itself, twisting and contorting the world around me to my will. The power was intoxicating, and I reveled in it, using my powers to shape the world to my whims. But soon, I realized the terrible price that came with this power. My body continued to twist and contort, becoming more grotesque and monstrous with each passing day. And with each twist and contortion, my mind became more twisted and corrupted. It wasn't long before I realized that the malevolent spirit had been playing a game with me all along, luring me into a false sense of security before taking complete control over me. As I struggled to maintain control over my mind and body, the malevolent spirit continued to twist and warp the world around me, driving me to the brink of insanity. And so, I am left with a terrible choice. Do I continue to embrace my newfound powers, even as my body and mind continue to twist and contort? Or do I try to find a way to banish the malevolent spirit once and for all, knowing that I may never be able to control the power that it has granted me? Either way, I am trapped in a never-ending cycle of horror and madness, a twisted and monstrous form forever haunted by the malevolent spirit that controls me. As I struggled to maintain control over my mind and body, I realized that I had made a grave mistake. My thirst for power and my willingness to embrace the malevolent spirit had led me down a path of darkness and horror that I could never escape. And then, one day, the malevolent spirit began to speak to me directly, its voice a chilling whisper in the back of my mind. It spoke of a great darkness that was coming, a darkness that would consume everything in its path. As I listened to the malevolent spirit, I realized with growing horror that I had become a pawn in a larger game, a game that had been played for eons by dark and malevolent forces beyond my understanding. And then, the darkness came. It was a force beyond anything I had ever encountered, a darkness that consumed everything in its path, leaving nothing but twisted and contorted remains in its wake. I tried to fight against the darkness, using my powers to shape and twist reality in a desperate attempt to stop it. But it was no use. The darkness consumed everything, leaving me alone in a world of twisted and broken remnants. As I stood amidst the ruins of the world that I had helped to create, I realized with a sense of overwhelming horror that I was trapped in a never-ending cycle of darkness and horror, forever twisted and contorted by the malevolent spirit that controlled me. And so, I am left to wander the ruins of the world, a twisted and monstrous form forever haunted by the malevolent spirit that controls me, forever trapped in a never-ending cycle of darkness and horror. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel for more great content. Your support helps us continue to create and share valuable information with you. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.